So hello, uh, my name is Denise Kenny, and I'm a professor in the Department of Creative Studies. I teach theater and performance here at UBC Okanagan, and I'm here with my colleague, Tracy Ross, who also teaches in the performance program here. We're here just to talk a little bit about um, our program and, and why we do what we do. What we do is really important. It's one of the few places where students who, who go to UBCO and who may be in other faculties and other programs, it's one of the only places where they can come together in small groups and do embodied work, playful work, where they're employing all kinds of communication strategies, their bodies, their voices, their imaginations, um, their creativity. Yeah, Theatre 104, which deals with basic public speaking skills. And we have students that are actually lots of first year students take it, but it's also a course that when students have gotten around to their third or fourth year and they're looking for something that's going to send them off with some really practical skills into the world, that they can apply those regardless of what faculty they've been in. So if it's been science or management, management where they have to do a lot of presentations, that they actually get to practice in a really supportive, low-stakes environment, how to organize their thoughts, how to articulate, and how to add value to a conversation, which I think is really, really important, especially nowadays, to return to the oral form of communication. People hear about theater. Um, they usually think of traditional theater texts that an actor just translates. And we do have a few courses like that, so acting for stage and screen, that kind of thing. But our program is really predicated on the idea of devising original work or creating original work or um, doing performances out in the community or devising strategies for engaging the community in some way. So it's a little bit different in, in that way. Um, like the 104 mm -hmm. uh, public speaking, right now I'm teaching a course for the Bachelor of Sustainability, and those students are creating interventions out on, you know, on campus and in the community, um, finding ways to creatively engage people in the conversation around sustainability, that kind of thing. Theatre, ultimately, and storytelling, we th sometimes we can tend to think of it as a one-way communication, but really, I think what you're saying about the devised theater is that it becomes two-way, that it is a way to engage in the discourse or conversation, and that uh, there's an element of unknown that we walk into that's a little bit different than when you have a piece of text and you interpret the text. So that conversation with community is a really, really important part of, I think, of what our program offers. And helping students find their voices, like in the spoken word course or um, even in some of the film classes that I teach as well within the performance program. It, they're they're finding their voices, and you know we've had we consistently yeah. have students who. Um, tell us that even though they're in other programs, that it's in our studio environment, it's in our classes, that they really feel like they've oriented themselves within the world, that they found a voice, that they've learned a little bit more about who they are and how to engage with people in meaningful ways and in creative ways. It's a space for them just to breathe, be together, um, and explore. We're not striving just to create theater makers. We're striving to create critical minds that engage with ideas and take on new perspectives and understand the world from other people's points of view. So whether they be telling their own story specifically through some of these um, engagements or tackling a text or interpreting and translating information into an art form is that the skills that underlie theater are things that will apply to them as human beings, as people. I love the fact that in our classes, we have people, we have a whole range mm -hmm. of, of 
skills and ways of thinking and ways of approaching thing and and physical abilities vocal abilities language abilities and and it just makes it a really rich environment because there there are so many ways to create um, I think people tend again to think of sort of one aspect of sort of more traditional theater, but within the contemporary performance landscape, it really is all over the map. And and we continue as performers and makers ourselves as artists. And and I love continuing to sort of dig into other ways of doing contemporary performance. And and we're embedded within. Uh, um, a department that is visual arts and creative writing. A lot of the work I do is with creative writers, you know, and, and, and computational arts. And so all those things influence what we do from a contemporary performance landscape. And some of the most interesting folks out there are really doing stuff that many people wouldn't even think of as performance in some ways. And so in our classes, we really encourage our students to, to explore what, how they want to do it as well. And then our expertise is in guiding them through the process um, to achieve that. I really think teaching is an experience of mutual learning. And okay. um, we learn from our students all the time. They learn from us. Um, and it's always, always re a relationship and it's always a conversation. And that's why it's always really hard. It's not just about us going in with a curriculum and, 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 and teaching curriculum like an object. It's always a process by which we're trying to untangle what a student's um, creative impulses are, what they want to say, how they want to say it, where they want to say it, to whom they want to say it. And uh, each student is an individual. And so while it is hard, um, it's, it, it keeps our job interesting. You know, we often get asked, why, uh, why study the humanities? Why the fine arts? Don't you think, though, Denise, that it's a little bit in the title? Like human? <laughs> I mean, really? Yeah. I think it's, you know, when you think about the humanities, it's, it is a reflection of what it means to be human. So it is in these stories that we pass on knowledge in, it's how we communicate. It's how we've learned for millennia. And so there can be the sciences and the engineers. All of that is really, really important. And there's, of course, that in and of itself is creative, right? Yeah, in oh order yeah, to problem sure. solve and think. And so you know, the idea of being able to imagine an alternate possibility. Again, right now with everything that's going on, to invite us into a new space or into a new way of thinking that something else might be possible, I think it leads to all kinds of things. I'm Empathy, thinking, hope. I'm thinking outside And thinking outside the box, the imagination mm -hmm. helps us um, think outside the box. And I actually find the question funny in a way because I challenge anybody to reflect on their day and come up with a day where they are not engaging with artists. Are they listening to music? Are they watching mm -hmm. television? Are they watching movies? Are they listening to the radio? Are they reading books? We engage more with the arts and humanities in our daily life than probably any, any other thing. But the arts and humanities are the disciplines where we learn how to use those technologies, why we use those technologies, um, what our values are. Like they're like, it's like the tuning fork of our, of our souls. I mean, we're the social acupuncturists, right? It is so important, the stories we tell, you know, um, in terms of climate change and the sustainability issues, the scientists have done their jobs. The information is there. We know what the information is. And, and I think people just think that as long as they just keep putting the information out there, that there will be some kind of miraculous societal change. 
But it's how the stories are being told. It's how we receive them. It's how what our values are, how we live them, how we embody them. All those relational realities will influence how we move forward. And that is where the arts and humanities sit, is that is that, that interface.